Hi, it's a real honor to participate in the Bangalore Tech Summit. And um, I have a long history with Bangalore, as many of you may know. Um, and I was really pleased actually to read this week in The Economist that Aditya Puri was selected the world's best banker. Um, and I, I can clearly remember when in the late 90s, ICICI Bank and HDFC introduced a new way of consumer banking in India. And everybody knows the story by then, by now. Um, but I also believe that uh, there's a message here for healthcare. Because what both HDFC and ICICI did was really bring financial services to the people to really have a, a digitally enabled proposition that could help people deal with their finances at scale. And I think we're talking about similar things now in healthcare, where we want to bring healthcare to over a billion people in a scalable model where we fully leverage digital technologies. And that's what I want to talk about today with you. And we've seen a new reality in just nine months, and also in India. And if we look at what Apollo Hospitals has done in the past couple of months, I think we see the shape of things to come for India, but also for the rest of the world. We've seen people actually going truly virtual, really starting to do everything at home, shopping at home, eating at home, exercising at home, and actually seeing their doctors from their home. So virtual care has become reality at a scale that we haven't seen anywhere before. We've seen that people talk to their patients using digital means, but we also have seen people supporting each other. So providers supporting the front line through digital technologies. And Philips was very much a part of that with our uh, remote control center for ICUs, where we use cameras and telemetry to get insights in the state of patients, to support the care of patients with protocols, and to help those patients with the highest acuity. And when patients stabilize them, um, make sure that we could bring them home and care for them at home. So we've seen different ways of providing care between providers. We've seen innovation suddenly going into high gear. We saw the need for a new ventilator, um, not one uh, necessarily be used in ICUs, but people who deal with ventilation problems at home or in clinics. And we developed one in six weeks. I've never seen anything like that in my life before. And we got the regulatory approval, the manufacturing going, and all virtually. We had teams working 24-7 around the clock um, in virtual teams to deliver this. And lastly, we've seen new business models. We've seen people embracing you know, as a service models to get things deployed faster and not uh, put up the, all the capital up front, but actually pay for, for them as they start using the equipment and the services. And government playing an increasingly proactive role in this. So all this against the backdrop of creating a better world, a healthier world in the face of a pandemic. And this is very much our purpose and our purpose transcends you know, our products and services is basically the reason why we believe are contributing to society. And we want to improve people's health and well-being through meaningful innovation. So our, our innovation is always at the service of creating better health care, um, better support of consumers in pursuing healthier lives. And we set ourselves a pretty uh, tall uh, goal to do that for two and a half billion people by 2030. And that's why India is so important to us. We're already a strong and present player, but we want to be more meaningful in India and working closely with our partners, the healthcare providers, technology companies, and the government to really impact the health of people in India. And we want to do that by, by also making people enthusiastic and, and motivated to deliver on that promise. And technology plays a big role on this, but that technology will serve a bigger purpose. And first, we see that healthcare is not a matter of dealing with episodes of disease that need to be treated. We see that increasingly part of our lives, where we want to live healthier lives 
avoid disease, avoid getting COVID, specifically when we have prior conditions that may complicate the, the, the whole process. And if people have disease, we want to make sure that we catch it early so that we can treat it better and in a more precise way, better fitted with the needs of those patients. And we want to measure ourselves on that. And we believe everybody should measure ourselves on those outcomes, better health outcomes, better experiences, better ways for healthcare workers to support their patients and clearly doing it at scale at way lower cost. And technology is going to play a huge role in that. And we're already seeing it. We seeing the means to get deeper insights by combining what we see on images, in blood tests, in, uh, uh, in uh, tests that we do with patients, but we can also see it in the way we monitor those patients, either in the intensive care unit or at home through wearable monitors. We can now visualize those insights. For instance, we can see a cancer in an image, we can quantify that cancer, we can do the pathology on that cancer, the cell structure, we can even do the genomics and bring that together so that we can find the best treatment for that cancer. And in that, in treating cancer, in treating COVID, in treating heart disease, we have to learn from each other, we have to learn from the forerunners. And we see in India, we have a very fertile market for that because already 88% of the providers in India are embracing digital means to do that. And if we can now structure that at scale, I think we'll have a way better impact on population health. That means making sure that we truly understand those patients at risk requiring the services needed to uh, stabilize the condition or create better outcomes, to make sure that those at risk who haven't contracted disease yet or deteriorating, to guide them better through the healthcare system, and last and not least, those who are healthy, to keep them healthy. And that means that we have to look at it almost like we're doing a retail, you know, uh, stratifying the population and then tuning the services to what these people really need. And many times it's clinical, but other times it can be social and educational as well. So we have to tune the services to the needs. And we'll do that in a model where it's not all in the hospital. It will be done in clinics, in the community, and it increasingly will be done at home. And Apollo has shown that during the COVID that they can actually deliver on that model at scale. And that model can be uh, similar to what HDFC or ICI has done in finance, where you have the mini branches that has a, a pharmacy that has diagnostic capabilities connected to a network where doctors in the network can provide care in those clinics. And for those really complex patients, they can use the hospital. And even patients at home can be remotely monitored through technical means. And we see that increasingly we're looking at command centers that do this at scale. And for instance, Fortis Group in, in Delhi already has a command center where they remotely support ICU beds in smaller, in two or, three, two or two or three cities. And by streaming the information and using artificial intelligence to identify those patients with the highest acuity and then intervene for those patients to maybe change the drip or change the ventilator settings or change the medication, bring them to a better place. And when they stabilize, to make sure they get properly discharged so that we can free up capacity for those who need it most. Uh, we also see that these models can work in rural areas. And one of the areas that is very close to us is um, the obstetric monitoring of pregnant women and reducing, dramatically reducing uh, maternal and infant death. And we created a digital solution together with Narayana Health to support those mothers um, with midwives, with the right technology to diagnose them and to give them advice and to give them support and to give them the right therapies when needed. And that has resulted in amazing um, outcomes. And those outcomes now give us the opportunity to help people at scale and create a healthier environment for mothers and their young children. Similarly, we're seeing that 
we can bring that technology at the point of care. And cardiac arrest and stroke are good examples where if we can diagnose it at the point of care, and we can use, in this case, um, a handheld ultrasound and monitors that stream the data to the specialist that can guide the first responders and make sure that that patient is brought to a hospital where they have the resources and the capacity to operate on them or to give them the right therapies so that we can save lives. And increasingly we're looking at this real time at the point of care technology to help guide um, patients in emergency need. And as we bring these people into the hospital or into diagnostic centers, artificial intelligence will allow us not to just form an image, but interpret that image and basically detect disease and quantify disease. And as we can quantify disease, we can compare it to other elements that are relevant to the patient. So we can contextualize what we see on that image. We can make the diagnostic equipment smarter, better understanding the patient and what we should be looking for in that patient and combine the different sources of information, which can be a medical record that shows the past, an earlier image, but it can also be um, what we monitor through wearable monitors and bring that all together in almost like a digital twin of the person. And what we can do with those digital twins, we can obviously compare them, we can simulate, and we can use that for better diagnosis, for better treatment, and always on learning. So with every procedure, with every diagnosis, with every patient, we can learn more and make that learning available in the network for those who care for those patients. So we create a closed loop. And we can use that for therapy as well. So uh, many of the cardiac uh, procedures are done these days in cat labs, catheter labs. And we use imaging, a combination of imaging, modeling, artificial intelligence, and smart catheters to guide the person who's doing the intervention, the surgeon, the team. And what you see here on this picture is actually a model of the heart. It's a real-time model that we glean from the images, we glean from the smart catheters, so that the team that's working on the patient in real time can guide the procedure. And they can actually literally take out the heart, open up the heart, look at it, discuss it, and then continue the procedure. But we can also learn from each procedure. We can simulate the procedure before the procedure is executed, and we can optimize it and allow these cat labs to operate 24 hours, connect those cat labs into a network so that we can really optimize the procedures for each patient, but also drive down the cost per patient in a, a, sh a large shared network. Very much like what the banks did 20 years ago when they started combining um, their branches, their networks into knowledge and networks that could guide um, consumers to better finances. And now we're going to do the same in healthcare. We're going to organize healthcare around the patient and make sure that we create almost these data lakes around the patients so that on these data lakes, we can do better diagnosis, we can do earlier intervention, earlier tests, so that we can avoid a deterioration or expensive procedures downstream. We can make sure that the data is available for research and innovation, that the data flows into the, the hospitals, the community centers, and the homes where these patients are treated. So it's gonna be a longitudinal integral view of the consumer, bringing together clinical knowledge, technology, and obviously the data that, that propels this to the next level. And as an organization, Philips is embracing fully open innovation, and Bangalore is one of our four innovation hubs. But we're also present in Pune, in Chennai, and in Delhi, where we create these amazing healthcare propositions. But we cannot do it alone. We will do it with our government partners. We will do it with our clinical partners, 
like Narayana Health, like Fortis, like Apollo, like Manipal, and other great providers that we have in India, and bring that together in an open ecosystem where we create way better outcomes. And I think we all share the same goals here. And COVID-19 has accelerated the digital innovation that allows us to experience virtual care today, to do data sharing, to create the best protocol for patients, for patients that suffer from COVID, and ultimately to create an ecosystem that has actionable insights in health and disease drivers for each patient, where treatment is precise, personal, predictive, and proactive, that's 24 seven holistic in the community and the home, and where we allocate scarce resources way more efficiently. And I see that future happening in India now.